we're gonna go over this smooth 3D warping clone transition. So this is how the transition looks. If you guys want to check out a fire trippy editing pack, check out the link in the description and also on the screen. This editing pack is still on sale, so grab it while you can while it's on sale. It's really easy to use and it's gonna elevate your visuals with crazy trippy effects. So once you guys are ready to learn the 3D warped clone effect, let's head right into After Effects. Once you're in After Effects, what you first want to do is make sure you guys have two clips that you want to transition into. So I have this one right here and then I transition into this one. So what you guys want to do is make sure that they are overlapping and then have about four or five frames between them. So what you guys want to do is have the one that you're going from. You want this one to go from opacity 100 and then down to zero here. You want to do the opposite on the top, zero to 100. So the result is going to look like this gonna just fade into each other now what you want to do is duplicate the top one right here go into your rotor brush and then rotor brush your subject out once you're done rotor brushing make sure you guys click freeze and let it do its magic so once it's done go back into your composition and now you guys want to do the same thing on the other clip duplicate it just highlight it and press ctrl d and then double click it and then what you guys want to do is rotor brush this one as well once you guys are done rotor brushing click freeze Go back into your composition. Now you want to play with your rotor brushes. Just make sure that it looks decent. Turn up the feather, mess with the shift edge, do what you guys need to do and do the same with the other one. Now what you guys want to do is make sure that you're working with 3D layers. So go into your toggle switches and modes and make sure that they're all a cube right here. What you guys want to do is highlight the two backgrounds, the one that's not the rotor brushes, and then you want to pre-comp them. Just click OK and then move them under like this. So now we have two rotor brushes and pre-comp with the two backgrounds. Now what you want to do is add some warp perspective to the pre-comp. And this is what's going to happen. So go to the beginning and have it start at 1 or 0. Make sure guys before you do this, make sure that the Z distance is set to 1. Now keyframe the latitude at the beginning. Go a few frames in and then turn it up. So for my example, I'm going to have about 65. Looks cool. You can see all the duplications in the background. And then go right before the transition happens and set another keyframe for the latitude. And then I'm going to turn it back down to 0 at about here. We can see this is what we have so far. I'm actually going to keyframe the Z distance from the beginning and then go right here, turn it up to about 0.65-ish, and then have that last a little bit towards the second clip, make another keyframe, and then turn it down to zero. And then right here, I'm gonna keyframe the shift origin X, start it at zero, and then go towards the end, and then turn it up to about 1080. Now what you guys wanna do is add some offsets, and then drag that to the composition. Go about a few frames before the transition happens and then keyframe the shift center and then go towards the end of the clip. Drag this up to where it matches. If it doesn't line up, just play around with the Z distance like this and then play around with the shift origin X again. Basically, you guys want to have this match up to the main character right here. Now make sure you guys highlight all your keyframes and then press F9 to easy ease them. So you guys can see our animation is happening a little bit too slow in the beginning. So I'm gonna have the offset start a little bit earlier. Just drag that further in. I'm gonna go to the graph and then play around with the keyframes a bit just to have it start a little bit more smoothly. So I think that looks cool. Now you guys want to drag some directional blur to blend it in better. So I like to have my directional blur at about 90. And then keyframe the blur length as the offset is happening. Go quite deep into the second clip and then turn it up. I'm going to have mine at about 95, 97-ish. Have it last few frames and then set another keyframe and then back down to zero. So I'm gonna adjust it a little bit, gonna drag it more inwards and then have the last keyframe at zero, drag it back. Now we can spice it up with some warp chroma, drag that to the composition. And you guys can see this is how it's gonna look. So you wanna mess with the Z distance. So you want it to start at one, and then when the offset is happening, keyframe the Z distance, go in a bit, and then keyframe it up like this. 0.94 looks good. Have it last a few frames, and then set another keyframe and then back up to one at the end. So now we gotta tweak around with the rotor brush 
a little bit. We want the rotor brush to come upwards from the 3D body right here and not just static like this. So as the world is going down like this, I want the rotor brush to not be visible. And then right about here, I want him to pop out from the 3D body that you guys see. The way we do that is to keyframe all this and then match it up with how Trippy is laying down there. So I'm gonna mess with the X rotation, drag the position a bit, scale him up, mess a bit more with the rotations. It doesn't have to be perfect, but once you've lined it up, kind of how it looks on the ground, you want to have everything keyframe, go a few more frames in like this, and then you guys want to reset all of these. So he's going to go from the ground and then up like this. So we have a, like a 3D transformation happening. And you guys can see it's kind of rough right here. So what you want to do is extend it a few more frames. You guys want to keyframe the opacity from 0 to 100. So it's like a smooth motion like this. And then because we don't have more frames of Trippy because it was kind of a short clip, we want to freeze frame him in this position right here. So duplicate this time freeze frame and have it last a few more frames. I'm gonna have this one above all the other layers. So if you guys get this weird thing where freeze frame just doesn't work, just pre-comp it and then time freeze frame once again. And now keyframe the position, go a few more frames in, drag the position down like this and then ease, ease these frames and then go into the graph editor and then play around with this. So that graph looks pretty cool. And then I'm gonna extend it a few more frames out like this. You guys can see Trippy is here and then he's gonna go out of the screen as this one is popping up. And it's kind of happening a little bit too abrupt. So we gotta extend the keyframes a bit more, maybe play around with the graph a tiny bit more. So that looks fine. When Trippy is appearing here, we want him to start small and then go and then expand out. Start at a low scale at about 35-ish. Go a few more frames in. As he's falling down, we can have this scale up. Like that. Make sure you guys ease, ease these frames. I'm gonna have it last a little bit longer. So I'm gonna have it last almost towards the end. So now you guys can see Trippy's rotor brush appearing starts small and then goes full scale and then matches up with the offset that we did earlier. Something we can do is add some exposure to the second Trippy. So we can have him start light, turn the exposure up like this. So this just catches the eye of the viewer a bit more and it's going to make it focus a bit more on what's happening. So keyframe the exposure, you want to have it high and then as he's appearing, turn it back down to zero. It's gonna look like this and you guys can see we have some glitching we want the second trippy to be behind the first trippy so the way to fix that is to cut the rotor brush that we did earlier and then drag this above like this so now you guys can see he's behind and now you guys can look over what you've done and then add some tweaks adjustments etc it's all up to you guys what you want to do so i can notice that the way trippy's appearing here is not that smooth so i'm just going to adjust make it match a little bit better so i'm going to highlight all these transform keyframes and f9ds so that these are easy ease it's going to make it look a bit smoother one thing i forgot to mention make sure you guys enable motion blur the three circles right here and then find the circle on the clips and then just drag it down to enable it on all clips so I'm quite happy with how this turned out and this is the final result. Thank you guys for watching this far into the video. If you guys want to support the channel, there's a link in the description with my trippy pack deluxe. It's really going to step up your guys' visuals, make it pop way more to the audience in a few simple steps. So I would really recommend checking that out if you guys take your visuals seriously. And also check out my Instagram down below and also hit the subscribe button. It takes a few seconds. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.